So here are the two new axles for the rear end of my pickup truck. But before we put these in, I want to do a little quick modification to these things. I want to upgrade from the 7 16 20 wheel studs to the half 20 wheel studs. Quite a bit beefier. Should hold up a lot better. I don't know why, but maybe it's the larger tires. Maybe it's because I constantly overload that truck when I use it. But they tend to break off on their own. So hopefully this will help keep that from happening. So let's unpackage these and get set up to change out those wheel studs. So there's a look at one of the smaller 7 16 20 studs. And there's the bigger half inch studs that we're going to go that we're going to go with. But we have to open up these hubs a bit or flanges because that's not going to work. So let's uh, get set up, drill and ream these, chamfer them, and then drive these studs in. So I'm all set up in the drill press, and it's simply a drill press vise clamped to the table holding our axle shaft vertical. Everything's kind of loose. That way it'll all kind of self-center over the holes that are existing. We'll drill them out, then we'll come back through and ream them all to the proper size that we want. Wish I had a one and done drill bit, but I don't. So here's a look at my favorite adjustable reamer design, at least that I've used anyway. You can see those three splits in the top and then that screw in the middle, which if you tighten that in, it expands this reamer, makes it a little bit larger. This is a brazed on carbide reamer. Really like these, they're easy to adjust. They're extremely repeatable, just a really nice design when it comes to adjustable reamers. Sometimes they can be tough to deal with, but this is a really good design. So to chamfer these, just going to use the hand drill.
Lucky for me, putting on brake shoes is my absolute favorite job of all time. I have you know, the tools and stuff, but I find that it's easier just to use a nice set of vice grips with the needle nose to pull these springs. Helps to keep everything together, you know, if you don't do you know, these every day. So here's a really common issue in that these brake adjusters lock up. And they get stuck. Yeah, this one's nice and free, but I'll take it inside and clean it up and, and lube it up while it's apart. So on these adjusters, I just put a very little lube in there. It's kind of a double-edged sword. It attracts all the grit and dirt, and then they just lock up from buildup. We'll put a little back in here. That should be good. Come on. Where did that even go? Oh, come on. All the leaves are the same color as the parts I'm looking for. It's amazing that drum brakes work at all. So here's where the vice grips slip off the spring and I bust open my hand. So let me tell you the story of this truck. I think it's pretty interesting. And boy, did I ever get ripped off when I bought that thing. So here's the story. Probably 10, 12 years ago, I had a young family, no money whatsoever. I wasn't the single guy who could afford a nice truck and nice clothes and stuff anymore. I was married with two kids trying to survive and you know, selling everything I had just to have a place to live. <laughs> but I wanted a pickup truck because I had always had one and I needed to move some stuff and I wanted my own truck again. So I got to looking on Craigslist. I wanted something cheap and I wanted something that was local. Well, this truck showed up. I've always been partial to the old C10 short bed, four wheel drives. Always been you know, fond of those trucks. Anyway, went and looked at this truck, me, my brother and my dad. And uh, you know, it was okay, it wasn't too bad. It was a lot better than it was as it is now uh, as far as what it looked like. And the guy that was selling it to me, man, he talked it up. It's had all kinds of stuff done to it. It should be pretty good. Unfortunately, it doesn't have exhaust on it at the moment, and that's always a dead giveaway. If it's not got exhaust on it, expect that the motor's bad. He said the motor's been recently rebuilt by a friend of his. Should be good to go. It had a fresh coat of dollar store black spray paint on it. It actually looked okay. 
but you couldn't hear it other over the loud exhaust. You couldn't hear anything, and I couldn't drive it home that way because, you know, I would have got pulled over, and it was obnoxiously loud. I didn't have insurance on it, so we trailered it home. Well, I got it here. I immediately put exhaust on it and found out that it was knocking so bad that yeah, I thought it was going to fly apart at any minute. The motor was complete junk in that thing. So before I drove it, I just went ahead, pulled the motor out of it, put a crank in it. I put rod bearings and main bearings. I put timing gears in it. I put an oil pump in it, uh, several other things. Got the motor back in it and uh, found out that the clutch was wore completely out of this thing as well. So put a clutch in it. Got to noticing that it didn't sound good in the rear end, and then I noticed that the rear end was out of this truck, which are what I'm doing now. The uh, pinion bearings were out, and it was just barely holding together. They had built this truck that they sold me out of all the junk parts that they had laying around just to get rid of it, and I'm the sucker that bought it. But, you know, you don't know unless you drive one, and I couldn't drive it because it didn't have exhaust and stuff on it, and that's just the way it went. That truck, I had to put everything on it. Clutch, main bearings, rod bearings, crankshaft. Uh, I put a distributor in it. I put, I put exhaust on it. I put uh, rear end. I did rebuilt the whole rear, rear end other than the uh, axles and the uh, spider gears. And a million other things. Front brakes and pads and bearings and... You get it. They got me on that one for sure. And I've been <laughs> fixing it ever since. So everything's cleaned up and ready to start going back together. There's our new diff gears or spiders, whatever you would like to call it. Shims as well. These are really simple to install. So let's go roll these in into the rear end and start putting that thing back together. So this retaining bolt that holds this pin on these spider gears, if it comes out while you're driving, this bolt comes out, you are in big trouble. The whole rear end will just detonate if this pin slides out and then starts whipping around inside of the uh, rear end housing. That's a very important bolt. And you can see, hopefully, that they have Loctite pre-installed very important that that stay where it's supposed to. Okay, other side gear, axle gear, whatever you want to call it. So now we need to roll the small diff gears in and they have to be timed. Not really timed, but yeah, I guess they do. So they have to be 180 degrees from one another or else the pin won't go through. Now we're not going to tighten the pin bolt up yet because I don't have the axles in because it will have to come back out. So I'm just going to put this bolt in here, loose. Then now I can slide the axles in. We'll have to pull the pin to put the keepers on.
So it's a nice cool morning. I think it's 40 something degrees outside. It's like 60 in the shop. I don't need a fire, but I wanna try out my wood stove that I have not shown, not in detail anyway, and make sure that it seals up the way that it should. My piping doesn't leak and smoke up the shop. I wanna see how well it draws and introduce you to my source of heat for the winter. All wood stoves are different and I wanna see how this one performs. If you run a wood stove, you'll know. They all burn a little different than the others. So let's build a small fire in this thing and see how it acts. Show you my setup. So quick story time. When I was growing up, we heated primarily with wood. When I was really young, we used coal, but my dad got tired of every year having to drive down into the mountains, get a load of coal, bring it back. When we lived in an area that was heavily wooded and we had it there and all my dad had to do was you know, stay around the place and cut it locally. So that's why we switched uh, when I was young to wood heat. And the house that I grew up in was a rickety old farmhouse. Although it was great, it was pretty much just a wind block, four walls. Uh, and if you drove a nail in to hang a picture, you know, if it was a really long nail, it would damage the siding on the outside of the house because the walls weren't studded, there was no insulation. It was a cold place, but you know, I still have tons of fond memories about it, even though it wasn't much of a house. Um, I can remember in the mornings waking up to the sound of mom starting a fire uh, in both the coal stove and the wood stove and eating my breakfast, scooting the chair closer to the stove to stay warm. And my dad standing on one end, my mom standing on the other with their cups of coffee, setting them on the stove, talking, you know, the paper uh, and uh, keeping their coffee warm on the stove while I, everybody was getting ready to go out for their daily business. So I have fond memories of wood stoves. I mean, a fire is something that uh, probably the majority of us uh, appreciate in some way or, or another, seeing as our, we wouldn't be here if our ancestors didn't huddle around them. Yeah, so let's build a fire in this thing. I'm excited to see how it acts. Starts going. Hopefully this takes off pretty easy. Some old pallet. So we got a fire going in there now. Just now getting going though. Really nice. I'm gonna smoke up the shop. The doors on this act like they seal really well heavy cast iron and the face is cast iron as well where these doors you know seal up against and the gaskets are good when a wood stove leaks or a coal stove whatever leaks air you cannot control how they burn they just immediately you know, burn your wood up and uh, they'll overheat real quick as well if you're not careful if you overload them so I expect this one to perform pretty good now this one has a automatic uh, vent, I guess, or dampener, whatever you'd like to call it. I don't know the technical term, but it's just a flap down at the bottom that opens a hole at the bottom of the firebox and lets more air in or closes and shuts that off. And it's got a bimetallic spring up here hooked to a chain that if the stove gets too hot, it shuts down. No matter if you turn it all the way up, it still will not open uh, that vent at the bottom. So that's really nice, and I uh, hope that it works. We'll see. So there's where the old chimney was, you can see, we, that we tore down probably a year ago. So we just ran our stove pipe through the existing, uh, existing hole in the block there. It is ceramic lined, and uh, made a bracket out of some copper tubing to support my stove pipe and then up to the outlet. I know you can't see it too well, but a nice tall stovepipe should draw really well. So it's nice, hopefully that works out well. So far so good. You know, no smoke coming from the pipes or anything. This thing is kicking. Feels good, it's like 40 something degrees. This morning, so relatively cool, 40 something degrees Fahrenheit. 
it's nice, man. I don't have a fan on this, so I'm going to have to use the big yellow fan, I guess, to circulate the air around the shop. Now all I got to do is get some wood to feed it, because I don't have that. So really, all that holds these axles in is this sea keeper. But it's installed in a way where it really can't fall out unless you know, unless this pin comes out. And if this pin comes out, you're hooped. It will run around inside there and just destroy the rear end housing. And it's all, like I think I said, based on this little pin here. And of course I didn't bring the wrench that I needed to tighten that. I don't run a gasket on these. I've got a new one in there. But just a, some RTV works good. The bigger the gob, the better the job on one of these. They almost always leak anyway. If I remember correctly, these take about two quarts. I mean, you just fill it up really till it starts draining out of this fill hole. It seems take forever unless you to fill these unless you got the one of those uh what looks like a grease gun but it just sucks up fluid and i think you get the idea pushes it in i had one but it leaked so bad i got aggravated with it and threw it in the trash so here we are Yeah, that'd be fun pull. Yep, that runs out of it. It's starting to run out now. I think I got it. Yep, that's it. Here we go. About two and a half quarts. So this truck does have a lot of problems, but it has some good things about it too. This cast iron, I believe it's an NP205 gear driven transfer case. Really nice. I tore this thing down when I got the truck, put all new bearings and stuff in it. The gears were really almost like new. And it's been a great transfer case. A lot better than the ones that these normally came with, the chain driven aluminum boxes. This is probably not going to break, not with the motor that's in this truck anyway. This is a pretty heavy duty transfer case. And the transmission is also uh, the cast iron three speed deal. So, pretty heavy duty, I forget what its uh, name is.
Hmm? Where Bobby is? Yeah, who knows. <laughs> what? So the passenger side of this truck, this front axle's got problems as well. One of them is these wheel bearings are bad. They've been making noise forever. I did clean this out and pack it with new grease, and they've been great for my use for a long time. The upper ball joint is out of this thing. Not horrible, but it is loose. The rotor is eat all to pieces. I am going to change the caliper on this side simply because I did the other one and this one wasn't in great shape either. I'm not even going to change the brake pads on this thing. It'll all make sense later. We just want to get this thing to where we can use it for now and uh, that'll be good enough. So let's stick the brakes on this side and we should be good to go for a little bit anyway. bit of anti-seize on these bleeders. Not a bad idea. Man, these phew, mosquitoes are wearing me out. All right, push the pedal. All right, hold it. Okay, pump it up. All right, hold it. All right, pump it up. Okay, hold it. Okay, pump it up. Little Bobby's upset about something. How's that brake pedal feel? All right, you holding it? All right, pump it up. And then we'll do that side over there one more time and we should be done. You don't have to hold it. I gotta get over to that other side. All right, well, if you would push and hold. Well, this wrench doesn't fit this bleeder. Hold on a second. If 
Yep, push and hold. Not yet. Okay, now pump it up. Okay, hold it. All right, now pump it up. And that should be it. Thank you, love. All right, let's see how she does. Excited to find out. They get rusty on the tabs and they just don't hold well. I need a new set of these. So it's early in the morning. I'm on my way to work and I decided I would drive my truck to test it out, see how, see how it was doing. 
it's not that awful far. But, you know, I don't guess it's that surprising that I'm walking down the highway because of that decision. The gas gauge doesn't work on it. I did put some gas in it before I left the house, all that I had in my jugs. It almost got me to the gas station. That's where we're going. Then we'll walk back and put some gas in it. And hopefully continue our journey. At least it didn't leave us too far from the station. I don't know if you can see that Dollar General store down there on the left. We're right in front of it, basically. So, not too far. It's just not raining. Horses. Probably, I don't know, one of those is worth more than everything I own, potentially, or ever will own. It's okay. Stop chewing on that fence. You don't take kindly to that. So I'd have to say, all in all, I'm pretty happy with the way that the repairs have went on this truck. You know, the reason why I ran out of gas is my fault, not the truck's fault. And, you know, I've drove it probably 40 miles since it's all back together, maybe a little farther than that, maybe 60. And got my first load of wood in it. And it seems to be doing fine, just like it always did before the brakes started giving me trouble. So, I plan on doing a little more work to this truck trying to get it up and more reliable, fix the gas gauge, maybe do a little cosmetic work on this thing, cat corners, rockers, uh, potentially a flatbed, if I could find a nice flatbed for this thing, you know, that I could put some wood uh, sides on for hauling wood like this because this is the primary use of this truck, is really a work truck and a bed is, is nice, but this bed's so rough that I think I'd you know, probably be better off with uh, you know, a nice flatbed and maybe even make it into uh, somewhat of a mobile repair truck. Just throwing ideas out there. I'm not set on anything other than making this truck more reliable. You know, fixing some of the electronics on it that are you know, really sketchy, putting some power steering, or <laughs> putting some modern belts on the engine 
that uh, don't uh, squeal every time I start this thing, no matter what you do. On and on and on. I mean, the list is endless, really. But I would, I would hope that in the not too distant future, this could be a decently reliable truck. So for a long time, I've I've had you know the idea in my mind that I'm going to find me another truck, maybe a heavier duty truck. But there's so much that has to happen in our family before I can really make that leap and do that. That realistically, I'll probably be running this truck for a while, you know, repairing it as I can afford, trying to make it a better, uh, you know, just more usable truck that isn't limited to a 30 mile from home range like it is now. I mean, I know a lot of us have been there, but that's what this truck is. I wouldn't take it too far. You'd end up walking. So as of right now, Knock on wood, the old farm truck is back in business, and uh, it's got a load of wood in the back, doing what it should be doing. Now, let me know if you guys would be interested in seeing maybe a repair series on that truck, because if I don't do something with it more than just repair it as it breaks, that thing's going to rot away, and there'll be nothing left of it in the next five years, and I'd there's a part of me that would really like to do some extensive repairs on those on that truck. I mean, 15 years ago, working in a body shop, we repaired trucks that were far worse than that, and they just turned out immaculate if you wanted to take the time. Aftermarket parts are readily available for that truck, and I'd like to modernize a few things on it, make it maybe a little more fuel efficient and more powerful. It's very easily, it, it would be very easy to do with the stuff that's available today. So, I don't know, let me know if you'd like to see a repair series on that, uh, because you know, I'm kind of torn. I don't want to see it go to nothing and just get uh, run into the ground. But uh, then again, you know, I don't have time to do it if uh, my viewers wouldn't want to see it. So we'll see. You know, there's part of me that really loves that old truck. Growing up as a kid, those were that was a, in my mind what a truck was. My brothers drove them. My dad drove them. Still does. And uh, you know, they're just uh, nice trucks. I'm not a huge this brand, that brand guy, because they all got problems. But I really love those old square bodies. And uh, there's not as many of them out there as they used to be. So let me know. Would you guys be interested in uh, seeing a repair series on that as I can do it, right? So I think that's it. Thanks for watching. Viewers, patrons, subscribers, anybody who's helped me out. It's much appreciated. So that's it. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. The birds fly south as the light leaves your eyes Hold on to your dream Oh, I know you wanna scream Since the day you're born You're just a flower on your own Through the storm